Elijah said, I hear the sound of rain before there was any rain. There was no cloud in the sky, but he said, I can hear it. But he was hearing it spiritually and he was seeing it before the cloud ever formed. So we have to discern by the spirit, the times and the seasons so that we can know what God's about to do. And God's been bringing me back in this, these two days, and Chuck mentioned it as well, 1 Kings 18 with Elijah on the mountain. It was a three-year journey for Elijah. It's probably longer, but he starts recounting, or he starts uh, laying out, this God does in Scripture, a three-year journey of, uh, of, of Elijah in 1 Kings 17. So it was three years of, of activity before he got to the uh, encounter with the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel and the fire fell and the rain came. Three, three years of intense uh, spiritual warfare. Now, of course, there was more than, longer than that uh, if you want to look at the overall demise and, and compromise of Israel. But by the time this encounter happened, they were in full-blown Baal worship. You would never have looked at the nation and said, God's about to do something, unless you were talking about judgment. But God knew he was going to do some things to bring repentance to a group of people on a mountain, which was going to allow him to bring the rain again and deal with Jezebel. So he, he came... Elijah came to Israel and he, he described their weakness, their idolatry. And, and by the way, don't, don't fail to realize how bad Baal worship was. We're talking human sacrifice. We're talking, we're talking uh, immorality, per, sexual perversions as a part of the religious activity. We're talking decay. And we're talking about a people that were supposed to be in covenant with Yahweh that are mixing all this other stuff into the worship of, they would just, you know, worship God and then they worship Baal and you know, perform their orgies and their rituals and then sacrifices and then do, and then do the blood sacrifice, an animal sacrifice to Yahweh. It was a mess. And Elijah came to him and said, and I'm saying all this because it's America. I'm not just trying to give you a history lesson. Elijah comes and says, how long will you halt, that's the King James, between opinions? And the word there, pasak, is a, is a word that, it, it, Hebrew is a picture language. So the word paints a picture and then from that picture you, you get meanings and translated certain different ways. But the word halt there doesn't mean stop. It means halting as in a halting limp. So it's because the word means this. This is the picture. So it's the word for a limp. It's the, it's the, he, he, was, he, he was actually saying, how long are you going to limp the limp of Baal? Because this, this is also the word for Passover. Why? Because I will pass over you. Isn't that interesting? He said, you're supposed to be dancing, because it's the word for dance. I can't do it up here yet, but you, know, you dance. You're supposed to be dancing the dance of Passover. That's what Miriam did after they came out of it. Egypt at Passover and then they got to the Red Sea God destroyed the enemies and they pasak, they danced the dance of, dan of freedom and Passover or you're going to limp don't get too carried away up here <laughs> the limp of Baal it's fascinating in the passage 
when they get to the encounter on the mountain. And Elijah lets the prophets of Baal go first. The passage says they started dancing part of their ritual to Baal to get him to send fire. Same word. Isn't that interesting? You got the limp, you got the false worship where they're trying to do the dance, and then you got the word that also means Passover. It's just like the Lord says, what are you going to choose? And I just, Elijah said, how long are you going to limp and halt? You're supposed to be strong through the blood of the lamb. You're supposed to be worshiping me. I also want to say, you know, just don't forget that, that, that God can squelch the power of Baal. He said, Baal didn't answer them. Ba- it wasn't that Baal didn't try. Yeah. I can guarantee you the demons behind the spirit, the, that Baal thing, they knew, they were there. They knew this encounter for the soul of a nation was happening. Uh, their, his, his army of false prophets were there. So it wasn't that they didn't respond because they chose not to. They didn't respond because God just kind of went. You've been doing your thing, but I'm saying right now to you, your dance won't perform anything. It won't release anything now. You can cry out all you want. You can sacrifice all you want. You can do anything you want to do. But I'm saying to you, you don't have any fire today. So when God gets ready to move, I don't care that the spirits of immorality, abortion, these things that are, that are, are, are giants in our land, God knows how to deal with them. He's just waiting for us to show up and say, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. <clears throat> the Lord, he is God. And put our faith in the God, the real God, Yahweh, who answers by fire. And when we show up to do that, which we are, when we show up to do that, He'll just say to the enemy, you be quiet. And we're, good, we're about to be delivered from the limp. Yeah. And we're going to dance the dance of Passover. Yeah. That'd be a real good time to just stand up and do something. Yeah. Come on. Dutch, the Lord just gave me a word that he says, I caused you in the last season to limp so that I could tie your heart to the soul of this nation. And as you have come out with strength today to stand before me, so we will make the choice today. We will no longer limp as a nation. Yeah. Amen. Amen.